Hello, Paul Solik here. We're going to talk a little bit about doing these virtual choir videos and a pretty easy way to get started with it. We're going to do the basics today. There's a whole lot you can do, and I might have some ways that are a little convoluted, but I'm what you got for the moment, so stay tuned for the ride. The basic idea that we want to do is to give one track that serves as our guide, and then we record all of the other voices and all the other videos around that. So our initial track sets our timing and our pitch and all of those things up. For the purposes of this one, as you can see, I've got several files. Each one of these will be a different video recording. The one with piano is my initial recording. So I set up my phone. I clapped because I need to have that in the audio file. And then I went and I did my playing. I didn't sing along this time, but this is what I'm going to use to listen to on the other recordings. So once that is done, I'm going to use my phone. Remember, I just recorded that on my phone. And I'm going to listen to it on my headphones. So I'm going to push play on my phone on that video. Listen to it through my headphones. And then I'm going to record the other parts on my computer. So it's like having a tape deck when you're pushing play on one and record on another. There is software that'll do this all in one unit, but for the purposes of this, it's just easier for me to use separate ones. So I'm using my laptop now to record the other parts, and what you'll hear is just me singing now. This is the alto part. Not beautiful, is it? And yes, if we go to the beginning here, I'm clapping. When we go to look at the waveforms of this later, that will all make sense. So what we're using here is a free program called DaVinci Resolve, and that's going to load up now. Once we get this all put in there, then we're going to drop in our different tracks, and because they all started recording or playing at a little bit different time, we need to line them up together. We'll do a little bit of trimming, adjust some audio file levels, and then we'll export it out into a video that you can upload to YouTube or Facebook. When you get in here, just double click the project. I'm gonna save it right away because saving is important. I'm gonna call it Glory Be to Jesus. And there's no clips in the media pool, but we're gonna solve that. Just open up your media. There we go, we'll drag that in. It'll ask about changing the frame rate. Yes, go ahead and change it. So now it has it up here on our files. So I'll select all of these, create a new timeline using the selected clips. Because I have five videos, I'll go five videos, and each one has its own audio track, five audio tracks. I'm going to create them. So they're there. Now down at the bottom, you can see this is kind of the different ways you can interact with things. We're going to go over to this editing mode here. Now up at the top, there's this little slider that controls how much you see. It's the zoom level. And if I zoom just here, I can see that all five of my clips are here and they've been placed on one track. But because we want them to all happen at one time, we need to drag them into their own. Remember, we just created five separate tracks. All right, so here we are. So if we played it just right now, it sounds like kind of a mess. So what we need to do is zoom in on this audio file we're going to zoom in here. Right now everything is showing in our in our audio. You can see the highs and the lows. But what we're really looking for right now is right here at the beginning. And if you're in here and this isn't showing up, make sure you right click and then say display individual audio channels. Or up here at the top where it asks about your timeline view options, you can adjust the size of the video or the audio tracks. So I'm going to have this at a nice rate so I can see maybe all of mine right at once. So here we are. I've got all five. So the piano one is my bass line. You can see my four claps right there. <clears throat> so I'm going to move these other things in in a general sense, get them in the basic area. And after that gets done, I'm going to do a little bit more fine tuning. You can see on this tenor part, I only clapped twice but I knew that those claps were still the last ones of it. So right here, then I'm going to move back, see where those claps are. And now I'm going to put my ruler right here, and wherever I zoom in now, it's going to zoom in it right around there. All right. 
So we see piano is our bass line. I want to move the alto one just a little. You can see where it'll move. And we're going to move that one back just a little bit more. Move that one back just a little bit more. There we go. So now we should, oh, there we go. You can see our two claps. Now if we click here, click where you want it to be, and then push the space bar, it'll play it. Hear them all together. All right. Let's zoom back out and see if we go into our piece. We'll hear the piano end, and then hopefully we'll hear people come in and sing. There we go. And because the piano sounds kind of loud, I'm going to click on it and then right on that line in the middle, just go right there and you can bring it down a little. If you don't want to hear the piano at all, there we go. But we want a little piano because I don't want to really listen to my voice that much. All right, and we basically notice where we're stopping here and where we're starting. I don't want to actually include all of the clapping. So these audio files right here that we were editing, those correspond to a video file up above. And right now they're linked, so when you click on one, it's going to select that. So this is the select tool. It's going to select that one, see how that's going. All right, so right up here, we're not going to modify other audio levels. If you wanted to do that with individual tracks, you could, but for right now, we won't. And we're going to just trim these down so that it comes right to where the piano starts. So see about that. And now it's pretty smart. It, it determines where there was a snap, and it's going to kind of snap these other things. So I'm just clicking and dragging. So then all of my cutoffs are, and my edits are all together. Do that. And now we're here at the end. We're going to basically do the same thing over there. So bring that in right about to where we stopped. You need to be steady with this. Yep, I'm proving. Oh, there we go. All right, so we have all of that. I'm going to click Control A, select all of it. Go back up here to the select, now I'm going to drag this all together and drag it way back to the beginning. Now, you could add some titles or something. Those would need to be on their own video track, but right now we're not even thinking about it. We are going to save, that's very important. So now what we need to do is arrange how we want all of our video files to operate. So we're going to bring this down. Notice when it changes there, it means we can modify. And if I put my cursor back over here, you see just one video clip. But we don't want just one, we want several. And we're going to click right down here and click on Transform. And what we should see, oh, we click off. Click just one video thing now transform, you see those little handles. Now we're able to move that in, and we can't quite see, oh, what's going on with that? Okay, so the one way here up on top, video five is gonna be the one that is, well, is it the one that's up on top right there? So let's go here into transform on five, and that one's gonna move. So you see the idea here, we're moving all of those things around. We'll come down and we'll do that with all of these. I'm going to put them in basic idea of where we want them. And I'll show you how to fine tune these things in just a second. So you would you are able to kind of switch these around if you want one to be in your background. Like right now, video one would, would be in that uh, background position. Let's see, let's get over here. Right there. So that would be behind all the videos. So for right now, let's just say that we want that one back here. And we'll drag that out to full position again. Drag it and move it. Great. And when you've selected any of these, notice that selecting that moves the handles around. If you want to decide exactly how they're positioned, you go up here while one's selected and click on Inspector. And right where it says what zoom percentage, 1.0 is full size. So we're right at about 0.311. And the position, zero is right in the middle. So if you click that, you can click zero, X and Y axis, the rise and the run. There you go. So that puts it there. So you can figure out kind of how that works. 500 would be right in there. I think it's on a thousand point scale. And 
how that would work. Eh, maybe not quite. You'll figure that out on your own, whatever that all means. So I just drag them to start and then I go in and fine tune those numbers, but it's a little laborious because you have to do it for each, each one as they're right there. But for right now, I'm just gonna move that up there. So I've got my total of five that are there and it seems like I'm ready, let's make sure. So now I'm gonna click play again. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So after that's done, I'm making sure that I'm saving throughout. I'm not gonna modify anything else because this is a simple tutorial. I'm gonna go over here to what I wanna do. And this is where you set your render settings. I usually set them like the YouTube default. And then I, after you set those settings of what quality and size you want, add to render queue, type in what you wanna type in. Glory be to Jesus. We type it right in there and then we click start render. And then the process begins. And there you have it, folks. There's the basic tutorial on how this DaVinci stuff works. It's got so many more features that can be explored, but that's the basic theory about making one of these multi-choir, multi-cam choirs, lots of air quotes things. So download it, have some fun, and make some music. Bye-bye.